the next talk is on art. I mean, we had to have an art talk in Kolkata and not get away without an art talk. To tell a, the topic is called Creating Game Art from Reality, the Photogrammarly Revolution in Games. Uh, to tell us more, I'd like to call upon stage Nimesh Rai from Laksha Digital. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be over here. First time in Kolkata, having wonderful audience over here. And I was also enlightened by the, the things that people in the panel spoke. I wish I could hear more. But uh, here's about the art. Uh, uh, I'm here to talk about uh, how to create game art, game art from reality. It's one of the new options now, uh, how photogrammetry is revolutionizing the game asset creation. Uh, my name is Libesh and I am with, from Lakshya. I'm a character art lead over there. I've been working for a total of 16 years. I have an experience creating art for CG industry. I have had pleasure of working on some of the best AAA titles that you can see on board. In my career so far, uh, I have worked for these many titles and plus more. At, even at this point, I'm working on some uh, uh, very exciting titles, but due to the uh, NDA, uh, NDA clause, I am not able to share it over here with you. Uh, I have been working with Lakshya since 2011. Uh, apart from Lakshya, I have also worked for studios like uh, Escotoons, Big Animation, Prana. Now today, um, as I am here to discuss about photogrammetry and uh, its usage in game asset creation. What is photogrammetry? Photogrammetry is the science of uh, creating uh, 3D objects from a series of photographs. This is very useful in particular when you are uh, creating complex scenes uh, the, and the process is quite flexible. This can be integrated to any existing pipeline if anyone is familiar uh, creating 3D assets. Now, photogrammetry can be divided into two broad uh, categories. One is aerial photogrammetry and the second one is the close uh, range photogrammetry where you uh, hold the camera in your hand or mount it on over a tripod and uh, revolve around the subject and uh, create a series of uh, images. You would require some equ equipment to do this. Uh, Yes, so you'd require some equipments. Uh, the equipments that you need would be DSLR or your uh, handheld camera, a tripod, uh, shutter device mechanism, wired or wireless, doesn't matter. Uh, 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 filter setup, cross-polarization setup, where you put a film on top of your flash and then another one on your uh, 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 lens filter. I'll talk about more next slide. Yeah, so uh, uh, filtration for the specular and uh, shadows is really important. Since we are uh, taking captures from the, from the real source, it is imperative that we uh, get rid of any shadows and specular highlights so that the mesh that we are going to build uh, is uh, free from error. Now, how does cross-polarization works? There are two filters set up. One is set up on top of the flashlight and second one on your lens barrel. They are set up diagonally. Uh, I mean, they intersect each other and you uh, basically that helps to cancel out any specular uh, information that you'll get from the flash. Now, how to capture the image? Uh, if you are uh, capturing the image from a, a still subject, then you can mount it on top of a rotating platform and you can take captures in increment. And if you are uh, working for a live, like a live, or, uh, live person or uh, let's say a human being, in that case, you can use the handheld method. You, uh, you need to revolve around the subject with the camera taking images as much as possible. You need to take multiple images from multiple angles. All right, that's all for the theory. Uh, uh, I went ahead and I have made some captures for the purpose of this demo. This is my old uh, cycling glove that I've uh, uh, created. Uh, here's what we have done. I have taken uh, a series of capture for, for, the, uh, for the glove. I have added mask inside of Photoshop. And uh, let's go step by step. Uh, I will go ahead and open the image sequence in Photoshop. Can we increase the volume? I have around 119 images 
captured from the camera all in raw format all right i will select all of the images so that any changes i make over here to bring down the specular in uh, shadows will affect all the layers after making all the changes once i'm satisfied i will click on open images this would get written into the raw format at even at the uh, later stage if you realize that you uh, you want to tweak it further or your settings are not working for you you can come down and uh, click on default and this would take you back to the original settings we will further go ahead and create mask i have so i have already created one I'll, let me delete this one i will show you how we uh, we can make it quickly uh, we can grab hold of quick uh, selection tool we will uh, grab hold of magic wand tool and alt select onto the wall and once onto the bottom that's it uh the mask has been created now we will go ahead and save this to our uh, directory uh, i'll be saving it inside of process the image folder and uh, i have chosen the format just to secure the alpha channel in it uh we will go ahead and make the kind of uh, the process that we did like selecting and adding uh, mass to all of the images once we are done with all those images we will be taking it into the processing software we will be using edge soft over here other softwares are also there that can be used for example uh, we can use zephyr you can uh, use uh, reality capture relatively one way or another the process would be same over there so once we understand the gist of it how these function we can use tool of uh, you can use tool of your choice so uh, i went ahead and i have uh, taken it inside of uh, meta shop what i'm going to do with meta shop is i'm going to align the images inside of it uh, i would build tie points and based on the tie points further i will generate point cloud uh, after uh, we are uh, uh, i mean we create point clouds and uh, we will inspect them and we will clean up the stray points uh, over here is uh, it's going to benefit us that we have created mask uh, the stray points would be minimal once the stray points are built and we are satisfied with it we will build mesh and thereafter textures after that we will export the textures and mesh inside of uh, photoshop and zbrush and we will process it further so i added up mask for all of the images and uh, now it's time to import the image i have already done it but i'll show you how it's done uh, you need to go into workflow add photos from here once you click on that and select the folder it will show inside over here inside the chunk once this is done we need to also import the mask this can be done clicking on to the chunk import import mask we need to go to workflow and hit align photos i'll keep the setting on highest uh key point limit has been increased and tie point uh, limit has been increased to has been increased to 12000 Uh, this takes anywhere around 30 to 40 minutes i'll speed up the video here the images have been aligned and the tie point has been generated all of the images got aligned which is a good thing the the tie points generated are being shown over here we can at this point we can delete all of the straight tie points by selecting with this uh, free from selection we can select all of the tie points that we want to get rid of straight tie points and we can delete them once this is done we are ready to generate the point cloud we'll go again to the workflow 
and hit on build point cloud. Again, it has different settings, but we'll keep it aggressive so that we can get the best result. This also takes time. It can take anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, we'll speed up the video here as well. The point cloud has been generated now. We can go inside of the chunk. Just remember the word the point cloud, cloud over here. We will have uh, some more Another way things to on it the view from uh, tri points to point cloud. Similarly, we can go into the point cloud and check solid colors and classes. Uh, this is still not a mesh. It's just a dense point cloud. All right. This seems good. The result is um, satisfactory. We will be getting some errors underneath it because we have not picked up scan from, from for that angle. To build the mesh, we will go to workflow again and hit on uh, build mesh. And hit OK. The mesh has been generated. To view it, we need to each of the process that we have initiated over here, like building up, takes around 30 to 40 minutes. So, is the reason why we have speeded up. This is our up. process model. Uh, this is still not a texture. It is uh, the information generated from the point cloud. The color information is being generated from there. Uh, we will f at this point we will uh, move on to building the textures. We'll go again to workflow and hit on build texture. Uh, I will generate diffuse map. The other map we can generate is occlusion map. Source data images. Uh, I will uh, texture size would be 8K, the maximum, and hit OK. The textures have been baked now. Pretty decent. Uh, patches like these we can always clean up in Photoshop. All right, I am satisfied with the result. To export the model now, I'll go to workspace, export model, uh, I will choose the desired format, EXR or TIFF. Why we are choosing TIFF or EXR? Because we want okay. to, uh, apart from the alpha channel, we also want to uh, secure the depth, uh, uh, depth channel inside of it. Camera from the distance measures the depth. All right. So from here, as I told you that uh, we have saved it inside of a uh, TIFF format. We uh, have preserved both the information, the alpha channel as well as the depth. Depth is the measurement of uh, from camera to subject. That is how the uh, the images get mapped. I got the reference up. mesh inside of my. All right. So here I would uh, export the mesh in Texas out of uh, MetaShape, and I would uh, further clean up the mesh, do retopo on top of it. I will also do UVs. Uh, once this is done, I would export it from there. I will take it inside of a ZBrush. I will clean up the mesh. I would add details if required. And uh, thereafter, I would uh, lower down divisions a, a couple, like uh, if it's on six or seven division inside of ZBrush, I would lower it a little bit. And then I will take it inside of uh, uh, the Metashape and I will pro project the textures back again. Why I'm taking the high poly mesh inside of Metashape is because uh, uh, while cleaning up, we make some changes like inside of volume or some things. So it's better to uh, project it on top of that. And since we are having UVs inside of uh, the rebuilt model, it would be beneficial that we will get all the text information captured on the high poly volume. 
So I got the reference mesh inside of Maya and I did a quick retop on top of it. Uh, I also went ahead and uh, did the UVs for it. Here's the build up mesh and the layout. Uh, we are now going to use this mesh to uh, capture the details in ZBrush. Once this is done, we will uh, take it back into uh, Meta Shape and we will transfer the uh, textures on top of it. I have got both the models inside of ZBrush. Uh, the retopper one and the captured. I went ahead and added divisions, did projections and made the cleanup. from this point to this point. Since we are only using this model for demo purpose, this would be adequate for this. We will now import the uv high poly model from ZBrush. Uh, this model would be replaced. model has been updated. We will go to the workflow and build textures. Remember we already have UVs inside of it. The textures have been regenerated now. At any point of time if you want to check how the images have been mapped we can always click on to this point over here. That's how basically Metashape uh, aligns your images inside. Uh, now we will go ahead and export the textures. And hit export from here. Here's a quick cleanup inside of Photoshop. I took the base uh, texture, made a copy, made some fixes with uh, a few of the tools like patch tool. And thereafter I did some uh, corrections to flatten up the image further. Thereafter I added a high pass just to punch in the details. High pass acts like a filter, it can be adjusted to curb the noise. For the purpose of demo this is what we are looking for. Uh, I am not going to uh, further process these parts of the UVs where the texture is not coming properly. I will fix them inside of uh, Painter. I've got the mesh and uh, diffuse map inside of Painter. I've also baked up the map. Except for the ID map which we are not using. Uh, now to hide these up I am going to apply a generator. I've tried to give it look of cement or mud and inside of the mask I've added this generator over here. And similarly for this one. This one is a more of a subtle. just to give it a little used kind of a look. That's how you get started with photogrammetry. So uh, the dirt looks, a obviously it looks a little bit too much. So I went ahead and I polished it a little further. This is how uh, it finally shaped up. Now to talk about photogrammetry again, uh, let's go to how uh, the significant developments are contributing. Uh, the recent development in AI and machine learning, 
it has helped to process large and complex scenes and reduce noise. Remember, we had to clean the noise in ZBrush and also in Photoshop. Uh, the high resolution camera and uh, multi sensors, multi cameras, uh, rig, advanced depth sensors, it's contributing uh, in picking up finer details and it's getting more accurate with that. On the fly, real time photogra photogrammetry helps in creation of large 3D scenes for AR and VR, uh, VR uh, scenes. The cloud-based platforms and advanced al algorithms are the development in uh, improved softwares. Uh, you can also get subscription-based softwares like uh, uh, like uh, Reality Capture or Polycam, where uh, a large number of developers or the uh, the people of or a large team can contribute to a single account and they can do the process rapidly. They would not require a very huge setup to to uh, process these information. Uh, drone and U uh, UAV photo, photo are uh, also contributing over here. Recent development in drone technology has uh, made us able to predefine path for systematic uh, capture of uh, images. It uh, maximizes the coverage and increases the accuracy. Other developments uh, are related to uh, mobile and handheld devices where uh, the modern cameras and uh, good depth uh, sensors are giving in way. You can capture and create 3D assets through your phone and build up really good scenes out of it. Few other things to discuss and new technologies, neural radiance field. Uh, this is in being particularly being developed by NVIDIA. They have uh, uh, recently made some advances on instant. Uh, uh, this is also by the way called Nerf. Don't look for Nerf. Nerf is a game, uh, a, a gun that you will find in Google. So neural radiance field, if you search for, then you'll find some relevant information. NVIDIA has been able to make instant captures, like with, within a uh, like milliseconds or seconds, they create a complex scene. This is uh, second to none. This technology is very revolutionary. The thing is with neural uh, is that how it works. It uh, basically uh, is a two two uh, two step process. First. The machine does the AI learning based on the photograph, and in second, it would create 3D scene out of it. I have added a link over here. You can go and uh, check out the link to read papers on it. Second thing worth uh, discussing about uh, the new advancement is uh, 3D Gaussian splatting or G splats. Now, G splats is supposedly going to change the way that we work in gaming. We, uh, remember, we have we create high poly, low poly and stuff, but G, G splats creates uh, splats of uh, 3D or blotches of 3D where uh, it can scan in real time and within R you can create a complex scene. It does not require the traditional way like uh, you uh, create high poly and low poly and stuff. So uh, uh, remember I told you about the point cloud thing. So G splats is based on the point cloud. With the help of point cloud, it uh, creates splat. I've added a, uh, a link for it. You can also go and check the YouTube link where they have created a stadium just based on a, a scan from a drone. Uh, recent advancement, advancement in Gaussian Splat has also added fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is the time. So uh, now with G-Splats, you'll get a dynamic uh, scene where it also factors the time. Remember, you don't have to add lighting information you don't have to do so many things like uh, the change of uh, like uh, time and thing would be in real time for the game. With this, we'll reach to conclusion. Uh, how we uh, integrate it in pipeline is pretty easy. We can add this to any existing pipeline. In fact, it lets you work in parallel. It lets you work in parallel in the way that you can uh, simultaneously, simultaneously work on low poly as well as high poly. Uh, the benefits from uh, these can be listed as uh, it is uh, it's going to require less number of people it's cost effective it's pretty fast now some pe about limitation some people would say that uh, it, the limitation is based that it can only capture things from reality uh, with ner uh, nerf over here it can be overruled where it does involve machine learning and uh, requires less number of captures. In future, maybe it's going to take up the fantasy and other artwork as well. Future of photography is pretty bright. Uh, we will see more and more things coming up with the help of photogrammetry. We'll be creating complex scenes 
and uh, real time uh, uh, creation of assets is going to help us greatly uh so with this our demo would come to an end over here uh, at this moment i would like to embark you that uh, the journey is just begin remember with photogrammetry you uh, have the power in your hand it's just the handheld device that you have holding the camera phone that you have with that click that uh, you can start with photogrammetry thank you so much i have added the email over here email address in case you have any queries or you want to connect please go ahead and email me on that thank you so much thank you nimesh any questions for nimesh i hope the presentation useful i mean because you don't normally get an art person sharing his trade secrets with the whole wide world or or what they do right i mean lakshya that that has been in the forefront of trying to skill people across the country uh, so i mean some really cool stuff ai is the future and you saw what nerf and things like that that um, um, nimesh shared this is going to be up on youtube tomorrow so you can check it out there as well um and i I wish everyone would uh, experiment some stuff on photogrammetry. Yeah, I mean, you can create stuff, and it becomes easier now with access to a lot more technology than what people in the past had. So it's time to use all the weapons at your disposal and build it from there. Thank you, Nimesh. Thank you for that presentation and coming all the way to Kolkata to do this. Thank you.